Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Sunday here at Servants for Christ Baptist Church. We greet you in the precious and adorable name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. We're going to open our service this morning coming from the book of Psalms with our morning scripture. In there you will find these words. Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but like, like shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing Amen. to the reading of his Amen. word. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning just as humble as we know how. Thank you, Father, for allowing your angels to watch over us last night. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for sitting high and looking low. Continue to watch over us, Heavenly Father, through a week's journey. We come now, Heavenly Father, on this Sunday morning because there is a word from you. There is a word, Heavenly Father, that it is to encourage, it is to heal, and it is to prosper. So we come, Lord, actually right now to clear all hearts and clear all minds, yes. take away all doubts, and renew within us right now, Father, the right spirit. Touch those who are here this morning. Bless those, Heavenly Father, who are listening in the airwaves, who are on the conference calls, who are on their way, Lord. Remove all hurt, harm, and danger from around them. These blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We want to thank everyone that's here this morning. Uh, we want to ask right now if Trustee Patricia Strickland would come and give you all a welcome. And followed by that, uh, I will have Sister Minister Patricia Jones come with an introduction this morning of our guest preacher. Amen. 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 Good morning, church, and good morning to those who are watching online. I want to welcome you this Sunday, and you are going to sit back and relax and hear a wonderful sermon. Enjoy. Welcome once, as Prince George used to say, welcome twice, welcome three times. Enjoy the sermon. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all of you all are watching us online this morning. What a blessing it is to be able to wake up and have a good message being presented to you. And that's exactly what we're going to have today. We have a person who has been here before, right. Reverend Arthur Bowen. He is no stranger to us. And when he comes, he comes with a word, a word from God. And we're just so excited. We're just on tippy toes just waiting to hear from him. He is a member of the Galilee Baptist Church where um, he preaches, he teaches, and he's such an anointed man of God. His wife is a deacon who is always here, a deaconess, who is always faithfully providing and supporting her husband. And we want to say a shout out to her and good morning and God bless her. And none other than after we have one song we're going to hear from, none other than the Reverend Archie Bowen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen. If you have your hymn books with me, turn to page 411, and we're going to have our morning selection, Lift Him Up. Amen? Amen. 411, Lift Him Up. 
And once you have it, just stand with me and we will sing the first and the fourth stanza of the song. Amen. Amen. First and fourth. First and fourth. Page 49. How to reach the masses, men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. Oh, lift him up. Lift him up, still he speaks from eternity, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me, lift him up by Christian Lord, let the world in you the Savior see. Then men will gladly follow him who was taught, I'll draw all men unto me. church, to his lovely wife, Minister Jones, to everyone assembled, God bless you. Amen. Amen. I bring you greetings on behalf of my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Lloyd T. McGriff, the Galilee Baptist Church, where we say we are determined to grow for Christ through worship, evangelism, and discipleship. Amen. Well, God has given me a sign. And the assignment is to preach here today. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long, but I want to leave you today with a word of encouragement mm -hmm. for we are really and truly living in trying times. Yes. You know, we can say that ever since Adam and Eve left the Garden of Eden, those were trying times. But today I'm going to talk about a subject that's dear to my heart and that I believe God would want us to know and understand, have some understanding of, that we might be able to be strong soldiers for Christ. Let, let us pray. Um, well, first let me read the scripture. My scripture text is found in Mark chapter 11, beginning at verse 23. And it reads, For assuredly I say to you, 
Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And whatever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Amen. 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 the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Amen. How to use for a subject today will be just one word, simply pray. Amen. Pray. 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 I have received some calls from people who have professed to be Christians, yet they are in turmoil in their psychological life, in their spiritual life. Due to this COVID, with folk being enclosed and actually not being able to physically assemble together at one point, a lot of people found themselves at war with their old habits. And they were looking for a word of encouragement, something that I could say that would encourage them to continue to run the race because I kept hearing this constant phrase I want to give up but I want to tell, stop by to tell you that that's just a way for Satan to try to kill steal and destroy mm -hmm. if you look at Luke chapter 4 where Jesus was having a discourse with Satan. Every time Satan would say something to Jesus, Jesus would respond with a, thus said the Lord. But then at the end of the text, you see where it said that Satan left him for an opportune time, meaning that he was going to come back. Well, that's the way it is for us. The Bible tells us that everything that is written in here is written as an example for us. So for power, for strength, for understanding, for knowing how to fight a spiritual battle, we have to look into the Word of God. Amen. You know, I saw something that said that there are seven rules of life. That we are, number one, to make peace with our past so it won't screw up the present. The second one was, what others think of you is none of your business. Huh? You can't affect what other folks think of you. You shouldn't be too concerned. But you should make sure that the life you live, God is pleased with it. Three, time heals almost everything. Just give it time. Yeah. Four, don't compare your life to others. And don't judge them. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what their journey is all about. There are many people who are struggling and straining and striving and we see them. And oftentimes those of us who believe we have made it yeah. are too critical of those we see on public display in their struggles. I never, I never shout or clap hands for somebody I see, even my enemy, because the word says in Proverbs that if you get too much glee out of the destruction of your enemy, God will halt the process. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. compare your life to others and don't judge them. Number five, stop thinking too much. It's all right not to know the answers. 
<laughs> they will come when you least expect it. Well, <laughs> Number six, no one is in charge of your happiness except you. Mm, you know, I remember when I first got, when I got married, I told my wife it was not my job to make you happy. <laughs> she didn't really understand what I was saying, so I had to really articulate and explain it to her. Yeah. That happiness comes from within. I have no idea what's on your mind unless you express it. I can try to get ahead of you, but if it's something you don't like, it's not going to make you happy. Mm -hmm. But I will try to do my best based on what I understand, not necessarily to even please you, but it's my job to please God. And in pleasing God, I know I will please you. And I'm confident it will make you happy. Amen. She understood what I was saying. Amen. No one is in charge of your happiness except you. Amen. And number seven, smile. Mm -hmm. you, don't know, you don't own all of the problems in the world. And then my eighth point, which brings me to my text, is pray. Amen. In order to accomplish all of this, one must learn, one must pray. What is prayer? Prayer is communication with God. That's all it is. Yes, it is. Communication with God. I know we want to tell God all our struggles, mm -hmm. tell God all our problems, mm -hmm. and that's what we should do. But have you ever noticed that he gave us one mouth and two ears? <laughs> so we should be listening more than we talk. Mm -hmm. God already knows what you need even before you ask it. Mm. Prayer is communicating with God. And Jesus intercedes for us, and the Holy Spirit translates for us as well. Yes. Praying is a command. Yes. We see it in Matthew 7, 7. It said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. It's really simple. Yes. Praying allows God to meet our need. Praying allows God to see our heart intent. Praying releases God's power in our lives. You know, in Matthew 18, 19, it talks about the fact that prayer will release power in our lives. Yes. And let me look, read for you Matthew 26, 41. Because I think it's important that we get a grasp of some of the intricate parts of prayer. 2641. This is what it says. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. There are so many things we desire to do, but there are so many temptations that can cause us to get off track. We have to learn how to set up warning signals in our lives, and that's where prayer comes in. Yes. You know, um, one person called and they were explaining to me that they thought they had been delivered from pornography. And I explained to them that you have, God can deliver you from it, but sometimes people keep resurrecting those things that they know God is not pleased with. It's not, it's not always Satan <laughs> that's bringing stuff to you. Sometimes people resurrect it on their own. Mm -hmm. Give you a good example. I used to wonder why is it that Jesus, the human Jesus, was found to be without sin. I mean, but because the scripture says that he was a man like us, that he suffered as we suffer. But how could he avoid sinful thoughts? And, and I come to the conclusion that for every, he played ping pong in his mind. I might be wrong, but I believe I'm correct. You know, when ping pong, somebody bats the ball to you, you bat it right back immediately. Mm -hmm. 
And you can, that's a continuous play until one misses the play. Well, I believe that's how it is in our minds. Because our minds are the theater for things that are not of God as well as the things of God. So when a thought comes to our mind through our ear gate or our eye gate, that is a sinful thought, then we have a responsibility to kick it out. And one of the ways we can do that is through prayer. And I believe that's how what Jesus was doing. Yeah. For every thought that would cross his mind. Because remember, being tempted is not a sin. It's the yielding to temptation. That's the sin. Amen. You know the song, Yield Not to yeah. Temptation. Yeah. For yielding is sin. Yeah. Each victory will help you. Yeah. Some others to win. Yeah. Strive manfully onward. Dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry you through. I'm talking about prayer for us. That's what I'm talking about. So look, if praying is a command, if prayer allows God to meet our needs, if prayer releases power in our lives, if forgiveness by others strengthens our prayers, if we must pray continually to avoid temptation, we must also pray to avoid worry. Yes. Let me read another text. This is found in Philippians. Chapter 4, beginning at verse 6, it tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God. You say, well, preacher, how do I do that? Yeah. How can I stop worry? How can I avoid worry? Well, this is what it says, verses 6 through 7. It says, be anxious. It says, but in everything, my prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make that your request be known to God. And then it says, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart. But this is what you have to do. Finally, you have to meditate on certain things. The most yeah. powerful organ in your body is your brain. Amen. Yeah. Your brain mm -hmm. controls your thought pattern, right. which will control your actions. Right. What, does, what does the scripture say? Mm -hmm. We must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen. And it Amen. says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Yeah. So it says, finally, brother, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Yes. You have to change your way of thinking. You have to delete all of the unnecessary trash that's in your mind. You have to fill it up with something else. Yes. And that something else should be found in the word of God and the communication with God through prayer. Yes. A, a, a mind that is focused on prayer is a mind that will be strong. Mm, yes. A mind that focuses on prayer is a mind that will cause others to see the glow and want to know, what do you have? Mm -hmm. How is it that you, you can say, and when I know you're, the world around you is falling apart, and I ask you how you're doing, you say, I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. How can you say that? Are you lying? Well, Are you telling the truth? Mm -hmm. No. That person has found that fortification and prayer fortifies their every being, the essence of who they are, yeah. solely. Because remember, everyone who confesses Jesus Christ gets the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. There is no Christian that is alone. Mm -hmm. Every Christian, you, got somebody, you have someone with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. But what we have to learn how to do is 
to determine the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is one and the same, versus our voice, or the voices of things surrounding us. Look what's going on now. There, I saw something the other day that said, Rick, on, uh, was it June the 24th, to celebrate uh, LGBTQ Pride Day? And I was like, you know, the, the rainbow flag, the rainbow is really a symbol of a promise from God. It's not a symbol of sin. Folk have hijacked that symbol until folk don't even understand where it originated from. And that is an abomination in the eyes of God that you would take a symbol of God and desecrate it. But we cannot understand spiritual matters if we don't get into this word and pray and allow the Holy Spirit to guide our thinking. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. So let me go back to my text now. I was in Mark chapter 11. And we see, if you read, read earlier, in the beginning of 11, Jesus had been preaching and teaching. And then as they were going to another place, he saw a fig tree. He said he was hungry. But when they came back, the tree had no fruit on it because Jesus had cursed that tree because it had no fruit. You know, I, I, I might put a pin here. If you continue to live your life in a way that is ungodly, you too will be destroyed. That's right. If you don't, and if you're a Christian and you're not producing fruit, then you have to really wonder, is your faith real? Oh yeah, I'm challenging you today. To think about who you are in Christ. Are you just going along to get along or are you getting your instructions and direction from God? If you don't talk to God, you have no relationship with God. Amen. Jesus talks about um, if you obey my command, my Father and I will come and sup with you. Make our abode with you. In other words, I, every time I read that scripture, I get the picture of two people sitting at the table with me with their feet crossed not wanting anything but just there to just help me with whatever I need. Well anyway Jesus, it says now on the morning as they passed out they saw the fruit tree dried up from the roots and Peter rem remembering said to him, Rabbi look the, the fig tree which you curse has withered away so Jesus answered and said to them have faith in God for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his mind, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Listen, folks, it's simple. Uh, I use an acronym, um, some letters, P P R F, meaning P, you have to pray, yeah. and then you have to believe, and then you have to receive it. And then you have to forgive others. Because if you don't, your prayer will be hindered. Oh, you don't think so? Look what it says. And whatever you, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive me. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your troubles. So if you don't have to forgive anyone, then your prayer is, it, it just go, go right back down. Because God is, people have to understand, ministry I'm not talking about preachers, just preachers, but ministry is about people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Period. Yes. God will never ask you about what folk have done to you other than to ask you how, how did you respond. Yeah. That's ministry. Yeah. Ministry is making the life of another better. Amen. That's what ministry is. Uh -huh. And that's what God will judge us on. And if, so if you're a mean-spirited, cantankerous, you need to pray and talk to God. You know what I believe? I believe once you start incorporating prayer in your regimen on a regular basis from the heart, people always talk about prayer that changes things. Yeah. Yes, it can. Yeah. But I tell you, it will change you first. Amen. It'll begin to change your way of thinking. Yeah. It'll begin to change your attitude. You'll begin to see yourself yeah. 
in the reflection of God's word, his spirit. Amen. The Bible comes with a mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because to the non-believer, I'm going to show you something and then I'm going to say a little something else and then I'm going to take my seat. In 1 John chapter 5, it says in verse 10, he who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Verse 12. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. That's a powerful piece right there. That's telling me that those who do not have Christ, you're like a dead man walking. Dead woman walking. But then he goes on to say, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. This is for the Christian. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. Yeah. What is the scripture saying? Have you ever had a prayer answered? Yeah. You ever stop to think that prayer that was answered, that's God showing you that I hear you, mm -hmm. that I see you? Yeah. This is a true story as I go, go to a close. Yeah. In 1969, August of 1969, I was a 19-year-old Marine Corps corporal in Vietnam. And we were on a night patrol in the jungle down in a place called uh, Ashaw Valley. Ashaw Valley was known as a killing zone. And most people that were getting wounded were getting wounded with head and chest wounds. So as we began to set up for the night, was, it, was a half, it wasn't a full moon, it was just a quarter moon. I, I never forget it as long as I live. And as I, my men were going up to set up the perimeter, I, I remained at the end of the perimeter. And I kept seeing this light for two seconds. And the light was a flicker, as if someone was um, flicking a big cigarette lighter. And then Two or three seconds after those lights, explosions began to happen. I realized those were grenades that were being tossed at us. So we, I moved toward the light. And as I moved toward the light, I looked to the left. And I saw a movement. And an NBA soldier popped up out of the hole. And I turned around and I froze. And he emptied his magazine. How do I know? Because when he went to reload, that's when I hit the ground. I thought I had been shot in the head, at most shot in the torso. But then another Marine came and, you know, and got him. But my, what's my point? Two days later, I received a letter in the mail from my mother. And she said that Walker Memorial Baptist Church, the church that I was a member of from a child on, was taking me before the altar every Sunday. Amen. That she had asked the church to pray for me from the time I went to Vietnam, and she made sure every Sunday mm. they would go and pray. Go! Mm. I'm telling you, folks, because I kept saying, how is it that I'm not hit? Yeah. He had me point blank range. Uh -huh. He had me from 50 feet. Mm. He could hit me with, his, with a blindfold on direct shot but I didn't get one scrape from that look at God God had put a shield around me because months earlier I had prayed too and I 
I asked God to give me strength in spite of the dangers here because I was about, I, I, I was going to lose my mind. Because you know the difference between cowardice and courage is your ability to control fear. That's all. And God gave, when I got up off my knees, I felt like I was a different man. What am I saying? If you don't know Jesus, you need to come to know Jesus so that you can have that prayer. God will hear the prayer of the non-believer. If you say, Lord, help me. Yeah. Lord, I believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. Lord, come into my life. Change me. If that's a sincere prayer, mm -hmm. Jesus will answer. Mm -hmm. And if you continue to communicate with God the Father through Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. you will begin to strengthen yourself and you will begin to strengthen others. Yes. It's just that simple, folks. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be alone. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be sad. You can have joy in spite of what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. But you must communicate with the one who makes all things well. Who makes all things better. I know some laugh at me Laugh at those of us. Ha, 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 ha. This unseen God. But let me tell you something. I understand that I know too much about him. Yes. So you sure, sure enough can't make me doubt him. Yes. Yes, so what am I trying to say? You come to Jesus while you have a chance. Yes. While you have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It will change your life. Yes, it will. Pray. Yes. It's a good weapon. changes things. Yes. yes, it does. But I heard Mother Teresa say she used to believe prayer changes things until she realized that prayer changes us uh, and we change things. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. Mm, prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. Prayer changes life. Ooh. Reverend Bowman says, you know, you pray, have you ever thought about the things I answered? Has that did you ever think that that was God answering your prayers, telling you that He heard you? He hears you. Yeah. Yes. yes, He does. But He also tells you how to pray. Come on. Yes. And when you pray, how to come to Him and pray. Amen. So don't just go thinking that if you get on your knee and pray, that boom, ta da. <laughs> you got to go to prayer with sincereness. Yeah. Yes, amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Bowman, for that. Sir. Yes. Last time he was here, he preached on save. So mm -hmm. if you didn't get that one, I hope you got prayer this morning. Amen. Because <laughs> you definitely need it. Amen. Yes, Amen. Mm -hmm. We thank everyone for tuning in with us today. And in the absence of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Jerry Jones, he sends his love to you all. And thank you for tuning in. Uh, we want to remind you that you can also find us on our website at Service for Christ, Inc. Dot org. We thank you all for who are tuned in and continue to contribute to our ministry. Help us grow in God's kingdom. You can always go into our website and contribute with our gift of file or PayPal. So we do ask you to continue to do that if there's something that you have heard today that has encouraged you or inspired you. Amen. Please continue to give and help us as we continue to keep our doors of the church open. Amen. Amen. We want to have Reverend Bowie come back to give us our clothes and benediction. Yes. And we're going to ask that you all continue to stay in prayer until we meet again. Amen. 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 Again, I'd like to thank Reverend Dr. Jones, Pastor Jones, for 
the opportunity to bring the word to you. I, I pray that if you don't belong to a church, join a church. Yes. Service of Christ ministry is a blessed ministry. Amen. Because I believe the pastor is an anointed pastor of God. Yeah. An humble man of God. <laughs> you know, he could be otherwise. He's an humble man of God. So find a church. Find other like-minded believers so that you can grow in Christ. Uh, decide to communicate with God. For it is the key. I'm going to end our service with just a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning and say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the open lines of communication with you. We realize, Lord God, that you answer our prayers with a yes and no, and sometimes not yet. Mm -hmm. It is a not yet, Lord God, that sometimes we have difficulties with. But we ask, Lord God, that you strengthen and fortify our spirits, that we will understand that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Therefore, Lord God, we should be confident that you will answer in due times when you sit high and look low, you look beyond the matter. You know what's ahead of us, Lord God. So. You're always on time. You're never late, Lord God. So allow us to continue to have confidence in you. Lord, we ask that you bless Pastor wherever he is right now. In the name of Jesus, protect him on every side. Bless his wife, his congregation, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, for this place called Service for Christ Baptist Church. And now, Lord God, we ask in the name of Jesus, but you continue to bless and keep us that as we go forward this day, that we will have a great rest of the year on purpose. Mm -hmm. That whatever stumbling blocks come against us, that you, we can see them as stepping stones to success in our spiritual life. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.